Hi there. So we are going live today to talk about something that's on a lot of folks' minds right now, and that is how you can be more effective using video to build relationships with your donors. So I'm joined today with Jennifer Singh. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. And she's going to be sharing some of her best pro tips. So Jennifer, kick us off by telling us a little more about yourself. So I'm a former TV reporter turned entrepreneur. So entrepreneurial life, you know, right now, if you're living it is pretty interesting. I transferred my skills from being a reporter, producer and writer to helping entrepreneurs with PR as well as media coaching. And part of that, of course, is the on, ca on camera training part. Excellent. And I know you and I actually originally met and you had given me some excellent tips when I first started out on video a little over a year ago, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on just to help folks think about how to get a little more comfortable getting on video, because this is really timely. It's a really important new skill set right now. So and on that note, tell us a bit more why you think video is such an important channel right now. Okay, so no doubt before the pandemic, we always heard that video was the best way to engage with our customers, with our donors, with our clients, with our audience, with our community, whoever we're talking to. If you are on a, a phone or you're scrolling through on your computer, you know that you're more likely to stop and start watching if there's video versus, let's say, a block of text, right? We just know that. We are visual beings. Now, because we are all at home, a majority of us, a lot of us are now moving online. I will tell you engagement is up, but it's also down. So for example, it is going to be very crowded, very noisy. I, for example, have a webinar, which I'll tell you guys about later happening tomorrow. I already have 54 signups. Would that have normally happened if uh, everybody was not home? Probably not. I usually get an average of 30. But mm -hmm. the point that I really just want to make is that social media is so noisy right now. So if you're trying to stand out like everybody else in your industry, hopping on video is going to be the best way to not only just stay connected with your community, but stay top of mind, show up as a leader. There's a lot of us, uh, Emma, that are in this, um, and rightfully so, we're either frozen or mm -hmm. we're moving forward very quickly. And if we're frozen, we're not taking any sort of action. A lot of us are not showing up like we may have previously. We're not sure if we should show up. We feel guilty. We feel um, icky about asking for money, especially when it comes to donors. Um, I will say my best advice for that is really shifting the way we think about it. If mm -hmm. you were feeling icky before the pandemic, when you were showing up, your marketing strategy was probably not as effective as it could have been. Yeah. Yes. So think about it like that. Were you showing up serving? Were you showing up offering tons of great value? You know, even free value, like doing something like this, guest hosting or even getting a guest to come on a webinar, getting a guest to come on an Instagram story, getting a donor recipient to come on to talk about how important it is right now. Um, I know I'm going off a little bit, but I like I got, I got goosebumps because I feel like this conversation just sparked so much uh, fuel for ideas. When I think of the entire movement, we also have this entire movement of people wanting to give, people spreading hope, people spreading solidarity. So it's not to say let's be opportunistic. No, 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 no. What we want to do is tap into that. If you are watching the media, a lot of us are tuning a lot of it out. But if you are watching, because I'm still watching, because PR is what I do, there are chunks of the newscast where they specifically are dedicating it to the good news stories. Mm -hmm. good news stories is not dead. Giving is not dead. Um, you know, asking for help is not dead. So I'll let you go to the next question. But I'm no. passionate about all of this because a lot of us are so frozen and I want us to get out of this spot. I really, really do. Yeah, it's so, so relevant because I'm noticing that with my colleagues and fundraisers and nonprofit is that people are feeling really stuck. So I love hearing that message from you actually outside of the sector saying, this is so important right now that you keep showing up, 
you keep serving, you keep bringing value, you keep offering your donors and supporters an opportunity to help. This is so, so important right now. So super relevant. Thank you for weighing in on that. That's that's awesome. Um, so I'll just uh, move quickly to the next question. I'm talking to a lot of folks who are feeling a lot of discomfort about getting in front of the camera. Can you talk a little bit about what some of the things you typically see when you're working with clients? What holds us back when we're thinking about getting on video? Well, number one thing, and I know a lot of people don't think about it, but it's 110% your mindset. So your mm -hmm. mindset around what other people are going to think about you. Are you going to make a mistake? What if you sound silly? What if you forget information? All that stuff has to do with what's going on inside your head and has zero to do with how you were serving your audience. And I'll just give you a very quick anecdote. I used to work for CP24, was live on air every morning for four and a half years. I messed up the first year. I was not my authentic self. I wasn't delivering how I wanted to deliver. And the way that I shifted it was that I started thinking more about how am I helping person A mm -hmm. get from point A to point B. I literally was just doing traffic, okay? I was doing traffic. I wasn't doing hardcore news reporting like I was previously. I was doing traffic. But I was showing up, I was slipping up, I was making mistakes. And then when I woke up every morning thinking to myself, how can I help this person who is struggling? Maybe there's a a train shut down, or maybe, um, you know, they're trapped on a bus somewhere, they can't get to work, they can't get home. How is what I'm doing going to provide them an answer, a solution? Mm -hmm. This is just kind of like email marketing one or marketing 101. It's more about them than it is about you. Mm -hmm. so one of the ways to get around your mindset, once you acknowledge that that's what really what's slowing you down, is what I like to do for myself. I have affirmations that I do, but um, I have a list of specific affirmations that I'll be sharing in a course that I'm teaching this weekend. But the other thing that I like to do is make a list. Make a list of like the top five things that, uh, that, that, that I'm going to say that's going to have impact on people. So mm -hmm. I do this on a daily basis, Emma. Just because I've been on camera for years doesn't mean that the imposter syndrome or feeling like I'm not going to be good enough or feeling like I'm going to mess up doesn't get me to. I did an interview recently with CTV News and I was really nervous because I was like the expert. I was going in. It was International Women's Day. And I literally wrote down, okay, I know my message is going to inspire. My mm -hmm. message is going to help women think about their imposter syndrome. Ironically, that's what I was talking about. Um, so all of that stuff. And I went in there and I I was myself. I was authentic. I was natural. But a lot of the things that I was getting wrapped up with, Emma, was like, do I look okay? Because I'm post baby number two. Um, you know, I have enough makeup on because I was doing my own makeup. Like, I'm thinking about all this stuff and not about the end result. How am I mm -hmm. I shifted my mindset. And then that's when I started showing up. So mindset's the first part of it. Second, the thing that people are, are you know, saying a lot is WTF. What do I say? Like, what do I say, right? Like, what do I say? WTF do I say when I hop on camera? So here's my little, little strategy. Mm -hmm. that I never just do a video. I never do that. Mm -hmm. I just write my copy. I use one piece of really strong copy or content or message for the week. And I've written it. It's strong. I spend 20 minutes maybe writing it. I write it when I'm in the emotion of it. I put that on my newsletter. Put that on Facebook. Put that on Instagram. Put that on LinkedIn. And then I expect little pieces of that to hop on video. So mm -hmm. it three, and you can move more here, do that. So that you're already familiar with the content. Some people use things like those those apps to help you teleprompter read? Emma, <laughs> no, like no, that's like an absolute no. Don't but do it. <laughs> people are not only listening to what you're saying, they're they're picking up on your body language. If mm -hmm. they get, they're gonna be too busy being distracted at you reading a teleprompter than even listening to you, right? Yeah. So it's the mindset, get your content in check first, and then the execution part of it. So I will show you guys, like I can't turn on my camera now, but I'm a complete DIYer. Yes, 100%. I learned all the camera lighting, et cetera, tricks because I was in TV for so many years and the cameramen were always like yelling at me to stand a certain way and be lit a certain way. But you can DIY it. Literally behind me, I have two cheap lights that I got from Amazon, total 50 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, a desk light and my Blue Yeti. And I'm... I'm going to say my lighting looks pretty good and I'm in a pretty dark room, right? I'm in a pretty dark awesome. room. 
So just showing up, um, I also just did a really quick, um, you know, whether you're male, whether you're female, just feeling your best could literally be washing your face, lots, lots of moisturizer, putting on a bright color and, you know, having water nearby, right? Those mm -hmm. are the little things that I do to get prepped. Mm -hmm. It's very smart. I think I see a lot of people overcomplicating it. Mm -hmm. um, and I see that, that a big mistake that a lot of fundraisers are making is exactly what you're talking about. They might script out everything they want to say and be looking at a, um, a prompter. But I think eye contact is so important. And it's something I'm still working on is that idea of actually looking into the lens and not sort of looking, you know, half off and your your eyes sort of rolling up and down reading the teleprompter. It can be so simple to set up. I have to say my setup right now, I want to turn the camera around and show you to you. My computer is a bit low. So I have three of my favorite coffee table books just lifting my camera up a little bit. And I shoot just facing a window. So I actually don't have, um, I don't even have official lighting down here, which I do have access to. But if you don't have a lot of equipment, you can in fact, uh, do a pretty high quality video with what you already have around the house, facing a window, even using your phone. The um, cameras on phones these days are pretty amazing. So yeah, yeah that's uh, the advantage of the natural light. Like you are so beautifully lit and you're not blown out. I think the one thing I was standing in front of uh, a window last week for my webinar, mm -hmm. but because it's a window at the side of the house, there's another house on the, like I can see my, my neighbors what ended up happening was there was like a the sun was going in and out of the clouds mm -hmm. so you could see the sun and then it would disappear from my neck and then it would appear so i feel like having like full access to a beautiful window like your setup great oh we lost you there for one quick second all right like yeah i think uh, um I th i'm hearing traffic for live video is quite high so we might be having a few little frozen moments but you're back and i'm back yeah, so I was just saying, like, setting up in front of beautiful natural light. Um, also, thinking about your background, right? So, Emma, your background's not distracting at all to me. It, you know, I see there's beautiful painting, but what you're wearing as well is not competing with your painting. So, let's say you hopped on and you were wearing a printed uh, top, and then you're competing with that art in the background, then it's going to be a little bit distracting. This is not to say that we need to be obsessed with what we're wearing. That is not what I'm trying to say. What I want us to really think about is that we want people to listen to us and to get them to listen to us. We just want to keep it as clean and as professional as possible. One of the other biggest mistakes that I'm seeing people is like, especially like if they're doing media interviews right now or on their camera is just getting the right angle. So mm. making sure that the, that the camera, like I'm touching it right now, is at my eye level. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking at my nose, right? Mm -hmm. And that means like standing back a little bit. There's nothing more than having somebody scroll and then just keep scrolling because you just look. Or maybe they're staring, right? Like they stop just to see how crazy your video is. It's like little tweaks like that that can just really elevate the performance and have people connected with you. That's the whole purpose of this, right? We want to stay connected with our audience right now and not lose them. And we want to be watched with the sound mm -hmm. on, not on mute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. And one thing I've been recommending to folks in addition to the idea of, you know, uh, whether you're on, whatever your role is right now, for a lot of us who are on the front lines of fundraising, for example, in major gifts, we can use these tips too, because traditionally we would be doing a lot of in-person meetings, face-to-face -face work, and you can actually move that um, not only to Zoom, but also to personalized video platforms, which is something I'm going to be talking about a little later mm -hmm. in the week, when you can actually be communicating with your donor one on one. And I think a lot of these principles become even more important, just um, not being perfect, but having a relatively uh, professional looking lighting, a clear picture, a clear sound. And just coming back to that idea of really being unscripted, perhaps having like some points ready or an outline of what you want to talk about, but uh, being able to speak from the heart and being able to speak authentically is so important, especially when you're shifting to using video 
in place of one-to-one, face-to-face as well. So these are these are such great ideas. And I think, you know, the number of ways you can use video right now is so incredible. If you just think about going live, doing personalized one-on-one video, doing town halls, having webinars. So that actually leads me to the next question. If you're just starting out, is there a good place to start that's like a little low pressure when you're just getting used to being on video? What's your what's your tips for us there for folks who are total newbies? So low pressure, meaning like there's not a lot of eyes watching you? <laughs> I would say live is a little higher pressure, right? If you've never yeah. done video before, hopping straight on a live can be a little bit intimidating, right? I guess so, yeah, for sure. I, I mean... Emma, at the end of the day, it's going to be practice. Nobody is going to be perfect at the end of it, whether you're just starting out on video or whether you've been doing it for years. There's going to be those moments of lack of self-confidence. I really am going to emphasize getting through that mindset piece and really shifting your focus is going to help you get over that initial hump. So if you were a newbie, one of the other tips that I have, because I know Emma, you had said like in terms of trying to make sure your eye contact is remaining with the camera, because it is a little tricky. What I used to do, and I think this is because I'm an only child. I used to do this all the time when I was a kid, was talk to the mirror. So if I find if you are able to look yourself in the eye in the, in a mirror, you're going to have a really good um, way to ground you because somebody is staring back at you. When we think of live audiences, when we think if we're on stage, a lot of the nerves come from all these eyes staring at us, right? But now on camera, we don't necessarily have to have, we don't have that, right? We have just like one little circle that we're looking at. Some of the tricks that we use when we were in television is to pretend you're talking to a friend or pretend you're talking to your ideal client or customer or your donor, right? That's kind of who we want to envision. There's a little bit of a caveat for that because for me, if I would, If I was actually picturing like a good friend, I would actually feel more nervous. (laughs) So whoever in your mind, you wouldn't feel nervous about thinking about serving. Um, I think once you get past the mindset piece, it's more about now let's map, let's start mapping out some content ideas. There's so many content ideas. I think we scratch our heads into thinking like we have to come up with something brilliant. But if we really just take a look to see what is it that our community is asking for right now, we can develop some ideas. Why not hop on video and say, this is a first for me. You're going to start seeing me here more on video. I'm showing up. How can I serve you guys? Do a quick Insta story on that. Insta stories I find on Instagram are the lowest. Like um, I know probably a lot of your communities on LinkedIn, but Mm -hmm. if you're trying to get some practice and you want low, (laughs) low risk, right? It's like, it's like we're talking about the stock market here, low risk right now. Hopping on Insta stories, it is really simple to figure it out. You can always hit uh, redo, record. I do that all the time. If I don't like the lighting or if I don't like how I sound, the key though, Emma, I don't re record 10 times. I do it once or twice and then I just go. You are going to learn by making mistakes. That is exactly how you're going to learn. Or if you guys come to my workshop this weekend, I'm going to walk you through it step by step on how to get a professional um, video up. But you know, it's a three parts of the success is your mindset, the content and the execution. That's my success formula, whether you're doing live video like this, whether you're doing a CTV interview, whether you're, you know, hopping onto Insta stories, it's all the same. That's the success formula, those three pieces right there. I love that. I think it's a lot more simple than folks think it is. And you know, I have shared my story before about getting started with video. And the first time I filmed a video, I think I actually did it for LinkedIn. It wasn't live, but I I think I took 18 takes to get it right. And I was like, I can't keep doing it. This is not sustainable and it's ridiculous. So I started putting a bit of a boundary on myself in terms of um, in terms of how many times I was going to do something. But a big learning for me was also just that idea of starting to create like maybe even an outline of three different points I wanted to cover. And again, just like speaking authentically from the heart, as opposed to trying to replicate a script that you've memorized or, you know, read a, read a big long script on a, on a teleprompter. So yeah, don't make my mistake and do 18 takes. You want to avoid that, but you know, take the time to get some practice. And I think on all the platforms you can create short videos and upload them. You don't necessarily have to start off going, live so 
Yeah, no, that's a really great point. And the fact that all of your video skills are totally transferable, whether you're doing personalized video, one-on-one -on -one communication with your donors, whether you're going live, even if you're in a Zoom meeting, like a lot of us are actually moving now over to Zoom meetings. And that idea of, you know, looking professional, even though we're all, we're all in the same boat, we're all working from home. A lot of us are working from home with small children at home, like yourself, Jennifer. Uh, we're all gonna have BBC guy moments, probably, um, you know, with the kids busting in behind. Yeah. <laughs> I just think getting a bit comfortable with being imperfect right now is not a bad thing. And in fact, I saw something really interesting from a fundraising colleague, her name's Jen Love at Agents of Good. And she was talking about how being vulnerable right now, not only as individuals, but also as organizations is one of the most crucial things we can do to get through this crisis. It's the organizations that allow themselves to be vulnerable, who are going to come out of this crisis intact. Those who do not may be struggling more. So interesting because I feel like that's an important message for folks who feel a bit reticent about getting on video because it does feel more vulnerable right so I almost I feel like this whole thing that happened I feel like we could almost think of it like we're at the bottom and it, mm -hmm. you can't really get any further than the bottom so let's just start climbing up like mm -hmm. really when we think about it we are all kind of on a level playing field right now I mean, okay. I have my two kids downstairs and you're right. They could burst into the room any, any minute right now. <laughs> what could, what am I really going to do? What am I really going to do? I'm not going to do anything, but I think it's, I think it's so important what you said. I think, I think it is just getting, um, seeing the big picture, you know, this is not going to last forever. We know that we're going to be on the other side of it. When you look back, are you going to be proud? How are you going to feel about how you showed up during this time for your community? right? And it's not to say that don't guilt yourself. If you get on camera one day and you're making a ton of mistakes or you're trying to get something out, but you find that you're re-recording too many times, let go of it and do it the next day. There's no reason to put pressure on ourselves to be perfect. The entire world is going through what you're going through right now. So there's no pressure here from anybody. Everybody gets it. Everybody understands. The only thing I say just don't use your phone doing Zoom and go to the washroom because it's really tricky to see if the camera's still on. I've seen so many people do making that mistake. But other than that, you're forgiven, right? You're forgiven. I love it. Okay, so I want to ask you one last question. What's the most important thing you want folks to take away from our conversation today? I think the most important thing is that we need to start showing up. Like we have a choice. We have that choice. We have, we can be frozen and we can be stuck or we can just choose to show up. It's a choice. Everybody has a choice. It's the respond or react thing that we always hear about. And it's just applicable, not only to video, to business, to life, how we are with our family, how we are with everything in our, in our entire sphere. Uh, in, embrace that, embrace being okay to show up, embrace that it's okay to make a mistake and embrace that everybody's, ex you're at like a better advantage now of hopping on video and being judged less than before. <laughs> Think about it like that, right? And at the end of the day, like if you still have a roof over your head and you're safe, hopping on video shouldn't be so scary, right? It shouldn't be so scary for everybody. That's like the one message that I want everybody to remember. I love that. So important. And tell us for folks who want to delve a little deeper into this topic, where can we find you? I know you've got some amazing resources available coming up. In fact, tomorrow, tell us a bit more about what you have coming up tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm doing my on-camera masterclass tomorrow. It's a free masterclass. I did it last week. The response was incredible. So I'm doing it again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. You can sign up for it at she'snewsworthy.com forward slash masterclass. And in that masterclass, we're going to dive much deeper into some of the things we talked about today in terms of getting your mindset in shape, in terms of trying to figure out your content and some tricks that I use. I use the rule of three as well as how to execute like on a professional level. So that's the masterclass. As of right now, Emma, there was 55 spots gone. <laughs> so okay. you know where Zoom is. Zoom is 
pretty uh, tap you out of 100. So I would definitely recommend if you're interested in coming to that master class registering today, because I will have to close off registration. And then if you're just ready to get into it, I'm hosting an on camera paid workshop. I'm doing two back to back. Uh, this coming Sunday is the first one. The next one is the following Sunday. And it's really taking you in depth, in detail on how to go from maybe not being on camera to leveling up. Everything you're going to learn in there is what I teach my one on one clients and group clients. I've had over 30 women land media spots in mainstream media. And all the same skills that we use if you're showing up on video. So I'm going to be incorporating a lot of those teachings as well, of course, my own teachings um, as being a reporter. The rate for that is $197, which Emma, it is a ridiculous rate. I know there's tons of competition out there for a lot of different webinars. Uh, working with me one-on-one -on -one is 1,000 plus. So if you show up to this workshop with a bunch of other people, you want to get the skills to get set up, to have your content in place, and to get set up with your tech. You don't need any tech experience for this at all. I, I highly recommend that you consider it. So again, masterclass tomorrow. She's newsworthy.com forward slash masterclass. And then this weekend, I have she's newsworthy.com forward slash crush because I called it crushing it on camera. I love it. All right, folks. Thank you, Jennifer, so much for joining us. I'll actually be back later this week as well to talk a little bit more about some of the tools that you can look into using. I'll be posting more about that. And if you have any questions for us, please leave a comment below. We'll come back and check to see if anyone has any inquiries and I'll drop actually those links into the comments as well when we're done so people have access to that because that is a great value and a very uh, non-profit friendly price, I feel like right now. So <laughs> thank you, Jennifer, so much. It's been great having you here. And uh, yes, our last message to folks is, you know, get on video and start getting comfortable. This is an opportunity for you really to start using this super crucial channel in your fundraising. So I'll be looking out for all of your videos. So. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks again, Jennifer. And if you have any questions, pop us a comment below, but thanks for watching. Thanks, Emma.